Intel has lost $3.5 billion through its GPU division today, or recently, says Analyst. This is coming from WCCF Tech. Let's go ahead and fix this. Apparently, this did not get selected. Hold on. Boom, bang, bing, boom, done. All right. Let's hop into it. Chipmaker Intel Corporation might be looking to shut down its graphics processing unit department due to heavy losses that have accumulated over the years, according to a fresh market research uh, report from John Petty Research. Let's double check this again. Yeah, Intel. This is crazy. All right, so the group is relatively new one at Intel, which is one of the oldest chip companies in the world. It focuses on its attention on developing and manufacturing GPU products as opposed to the traditional computing CPUs that have come to be associated with Intel. JPR estimates that shutting down the accelerated computing systems and graphics group will result in a $3.5 billion write-off by the company. As the division is yet to make a profit and Intel has invested $3.5 billion in it since it was set up. With the company starting to include the segment on its balance sheet from the first quarter of last year. Today's report, if it bears fruit, will result in another market being out of reach for Intel, which is one of the world's largest and oldest chip makers. The company is known for having refused to manufacture processors for smartphones in the early days of the industry and then lamenting later for having missed the train. Intel also sold its fifth generation 5G mobile modem portfolio to Apple, and now the company might do away with its GPU division as well. JPR's report does not cite any official sources, and it only uses rumors to guess if Intel's chief, Mr. Patrick Gel Gelsinger, will continue on his streak of shutting down unprofitable businesses to by taking aim at its GPU division next. He goes on to argue that shutting down the GPU department will make sense for Intel as the segment is yet to make any profits. Petty estimates that since its inception, the AXG group has cost Intel $3.5 billion in investments, and it has little to show for its earnings. Earrings. For this in-ear, what is they saying? All right, we got it. It's fine. They need to slow down and type it out because I can't read it if it's all... <laughs> I was like, hold on. What do you mean? in earrings i said the word right when i read it because i knew what it's supposed to be but what do you mean you have little to show for those earrings oh man they're gonna have to shut down for sure he also calls intel results calls intel results with its gpu an, an embarrassment with little adoption in the market and average performance in benchmarks the analyst, be analyst believes that competition from nvidia amd and startup implies that Intel should ax the AXG group next. Should Intel dump its AXG group? Probably. The company started the project six years ago. Since then, AMD and NVIDIA have brought out three generations of new and stunningly powerful GPUs, specifically discrete GPUs, and more in the pipeline. Four new companies have started up in China and two new ones are announced in the U.S. Intel is now facing a much stronger AMD and NVIDIA, plus six startups. The rules of engagement have dramatically changed while Intel sunk money into projects it can't seem to get off the ground. The best thing Intel could do at this juncture is to find a partner and sell off the group. It could even be dressed up as a strategic move, just as they did going uh, to TSMC to build the discrete GPU in the first place. The company can't continue to carry an enormous payroll, pay a competitive fab for wafers, and then ask governments to subsidize its investments in new fabs that can't even build the parts they are presumably designing. Not only is that a bewildering investment strategy, but it also is an embarrassment. At the end of the day, obviously what we've seen was some early initial reports of the Intel GPU being pretty good on the memory side of things for price to performance. And we were looking at it for mining, but the fact of the matter is, is Intel's not producing enough of these cards or getting them into the hands of the general consumer, much less even into OEMs, which means that you don't have even the opportunity to purchase these GPUs and they've invested a bunch into them. 
And I don't think that necessarily they picked the right team because the team they picked, to be completely frank, with Raja at the head of it, was the team that almost did away with ATI after AMD's acquisition of Radeon. And we've been talking about that for years and years. Actually, six years ago, I remember saying, I don't think this is a good idea. They basically hired the guy, <laughs> hired the guy that failed AMD uh, with the takeover of Radeon where they just basically followed the ATI roadmap for years and years and pretty much almost drove it into basically non-existence. And then they hire them at Intel to go ahead and develop GPUs. And clearly that's not working out. Sometimes it is about the team that's behind your projects, no matter how much money you have to invest into them. But Intel does say they have some, or appear to have some light at the end of the tunnel in regards to multi-GPUs, and they're placing bets on one API's multi-GPU support for Arc Gaming and Pro Graphics cards. Why would you need to do this? Well, this isn't dissimilar from what Radeon tried to do to catch up when Raja was in control of them. They really wanted to push that multi-GPU segment to the point of putting multiple dies on a single GPU, and while the technology was pretty cool as far as putting two GPU dies on a single board, on a single PCB, it didn't play out great with drivers and performance and applications. It's kind of funny that we're seeing the same pattern in yet another failed GPU launch. And this is going to play out interestingly. While I love multi-GPUs, if we just look at it objectively, we know that it hasn't proven to be very viable in either the workstation group or, of course, the gaming segment in the past, primarily, once again, due to drivers. In which, once again, is guess what the big problem here for Intel seems to be drivers. What was the big problem with Radeon when Raja was in control? Well, drivers. Uh, Intel showcased its Arc Gaming and Arc Pro graphics cards are SIGGRAPH this week. And one of the company's reps confirmed that the blue team is ready with multi-GPU support through its one API. It has been several years since AMD and NVIDIA abandoned any sort of multi-GPU support for their customer grade graphics cards. While the technology still exists in the server and HPC segment, it has more or less disappeared from the gaming scene. The reason is due to the poor scaling and that and value that multi-GPU APIs offer in games, plus having multi-GPU supported within engines means that developers have to add in extra hard work for an extremely small user base. Content creation apps and server workloads, on the other hand, can offer better utilization of multi-GPUs, and we have seen how NVIDIA with its MIG, multi-instance GPU design, and AMD with its GPU chiplets are gaining ground in the HPC segment. Intel has had similar chiplet-esque design coming soon with its Ponte Vecho and its future Rialto Bridge iteration that will take advantage of one API's multi-GPU suite. Even looking at content creation apps, we see that NVIDIA's top-of-the-line hardware has been designed to support at least two-way NVLink. There's a reason why the NVIDIA RTX 3090 series alongside the RTX A6000 graphics cards offer that functionality since certain pro workloads are designed to do just that. Intel, with its One API, believes that they can also leverage multi-GPU performance of their own hardware, including Arc Gaming and Arc Pro graphics cards. Talking to Tweaktown's Rob Squires, an Intel representative stated that ARC multi-GPU support was ready to be showcased at SIGGRAPH 2022. However, the reason they didn't show any demos was because the only test unit they had for ARC was a small NUC chassis, which can only house a single GPU, in this case, the A770 Limited Edition. Intel is finalizing their One API software for multi-GPU support. It turns out that it was only due to the inability to find the right chassis that prevented Intel from showing off a multiple GPU solution on the show floor this week. We have invested billions of dollars into our GPU department, but we forgot to bring anything but a nook to our showcase. Oh my goodness. 
What was made clear though, is that software support for an Intel multi-GPU solution is here and almost made its debut at SIGGRAPH 2022. The source we spoke with at Intel was referring to the consumer version of the discrete ARC GPU lineup, but adding support for the ARC Pro line should not be that far behind. The Intel representative also revealed that the multi-GPU One API software support they were going to showcase was developed around consumer ARC GPUs for the gaming lineup, but the company will also be adding support for the same technology across its ARC Pro lineup of chips. Now, whether One API multi-GPU optimization only targets Pro apps or gaming too remains to be seen, but it would be definitely a nice to see if Intel gets to offer some decent multi-GPU gaming performance versus its competitors. The company has already been adding various multi-GPU optimizations to its one VPL and one API libraries. Having two ARC A750 running together could offer a nice gain in performance versus an RTX 3070 or 3080 in the right gaming title. But one reason why multi-GPU is no longer viable for most gaming PCs is that it adds more cost, more power, more heat, and the overall portfolio of apps and games that can take advantage of it are too low to begin with. Hopefully Intel disclosing more details of its ARC lineup in the days ahead, we will get more detailed information. So there you go, that does come from, the, from Igor as far as the sources go. And it's weird to see the same pattern repeated that ATI Radeon had into now Intel. And it seems to once again be following the people that are working on it. And I'm not so sure once again that it was a great idea to hire these particular people if you wanted a successful GPU division. Just saying, if I was looking at it, I'd say, man, you guys seem to follow the same pattern. You have the same issues with the same mistakes. Why would we want to go, go with you guys this time? I just don't get it. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.